you made over $41,000 in the February school games mm -hmm. with your school community, New Earth Health Coaches. Yep. How did you get started with entrepreneurship and why did you start with entrepreneurship? Oh, man. Uh, we have to go way back. Uh, so I feel like I've always had the entrepreneurial bug. Um, school was never going to be my path. Uh, so pretty early on, yeah, just always kind of like had a creative mind, think I was going to do something. I was a ski bum for a little bit. And then when I was 20, I had this great idea. I was going to be a land developer. And um, I had no idea about it, but I like watched some TV shows where they were flipping houses. And I was like, I could do that. Uh, and then uh, basically, I thought, why would I do one house when I could do a condo project? And I went into the bank and like pitched them an idea and they gave me a half million dollar line of credit at 20, making eight bucks an hour. This is 2007. So that would like never happen now, but it did back then. And then 2008 happened and everything crashed and I was left holding a bag of like a half million dollars of debt at 20, no skills, no project. <laughs> um, and basically just I didn't want to go uh, bankrupt. So I was in the bank so much trying to not go bankrupt that they gave me a job, but it was a commission-based job and it was a traveling insurance salesman. And so I did, I basically worked as an independent sales rep um, within the bank. And then I learned the entire financial system from the inside out over, that started like a 14 year career in finance. So I became a certified financial planner. I built my own practice. Um, I eventually started like hiring and training other financial advisors. And then basically was in that system. And like once I learned how that system worked, I was like, oh man, this system is not set up to help the everyday person win. In fact, it's like just the opposite. Um, keep them stuck in debt, continue printing money, inflate. And so what I really wanted for myself was like to create freedom. And then ultimately what I wanted for my clients was freedom. And I knew it couldn't happen in that system. So I quit in 2016 and then went online and started as a money coach and then had to learn the marketing side of things. And that was my first, uh, I built that business with MRR in mind. Uh, and so I was actually able to sell that business in 2019 and then I founded the company that we have now, which is Soulful Sales Company. And it's basically approaching sales from a different lens that I was trained in, in that whole industry. And really looking at business and entrepreneurship as like, there's a deeper meaning here. Like, I, I feel like the purpose, if you can approach entrepreneurship from a personal development lens and like like you're doing like your soul's work, sales become very easy. And so that's kind of what we do and teach now. Nice. I had no idea about that. <laughs> so like your, your main thing is like the sales, like that's basically what you... That's like, that's my, I would say like, that's my highest leverage skill that I'm like good at. And if you look at our, like in the school games to make this relevant, it's like we by far have the smallest audience. We had nobody, like what's our audience? We have 10,000 uh, people on Instagram. We've got 9,000 people on an email list. And we have 1,700 people in a free community. So it's like, how do you pull that number out of a small audience? And it's like, it's sales. Is like, is the new, um, like the new earth health coach, is that, like my view from that was that it, that was like mostly like the, uh, about health. So, so like our, uh, maybe a little bit more context on that. So like we, my wife is a psychotherapist and when she was starting, she, basically I learned about that whole, that whole side of things. And that model for health practitioners is like, not good. If you're a health practitioner, most of them just give away 50% of their income to work for a clinic who does really bad marketing for them. And then it's like, so I helped her create her online business and basically a private practice. And then that started 
I was like, oh, this whole industry needs help. So we started working with health professionals, practitioners, coaches, like a lot of coaches. And a lot of them go on the same journey as I did, where they realize like the main industry is kind of corrupt and not really about health. Like the finance is not really about finance. And they want to go online. They want to do it their own way. So we have similar stories. Um, And then inside of that model, we teach a signature offer. Then we teach self-leadership skills, primarily sales, copywriting, build, uh, and then systems and then strategies. And so those are our five pillars that we teach in there. And we're making a new, new earth of health professionals who are doing it their own way. Interesting. And so like basically what you just described as well, how you went from the, like the real estate to the financial planners to what you're doing today, like how did you go from that to eventually find something that you truly enjoyed to like hmm. monetize like something that you like? How did that happen and how did you figure that out? Good question. Uh, a lot of trial and error. <laughs> a lot of like early days. I, you know, I got into finance because like through necessity, it's like I needed to make money and I needed to learn skills. Um, which I didn't have any of. So that was kind of my thinking initially. And then always throughout the journey, I've always been, I don't know why, but I'm just like very passionate about like spirituality and psychology. So those are the two things that I like, I'm like, ah, I want to learn more. It feels like like the inner, like the universe, but like the inverse is like infinite in that way. And it's like, there's always something. And so my curiosity for like understanding the self is always there. And then for me, it's mostly been about blending that into something that could be monetized like a commodity because it like that's, i and I, we work with a lot of people who do mindset or like energy work or things like this. And it's, those are intangible, very difficult to sell. So then it's like, how do you connect that with a practical, tangible thing in the world of commerce that makes it easier to sell? Yeah. And that's, yeah, just through like iterative moving towards the thing that, you know, blending that, my passions and something that I know can make money. Do you use like a lot of spirituality practices or like psychology practices in your own life that helps you in your business? And if so, what are those? I'm very interested. So like staples, just like staples are um, journaling, meditation, and drinking water, working out, reading books, um, and then journaling, meditating. And I would say like a practice of listening like to my own inner intuition, um, prayer, you know? So like I, there's a great quote by Wayne Dyer. He's like, if prayer is us talking to God, then intuition is God talking to us. And then it's like, but are we open to hear it? And then, and I think like, as I've been building my business and why I really love school is it's like, we tend to build these businesses because like, we think there's only like one way to do it. But at, as you kind of tune into your own intuition, your own inner genius, and then tr- learning to trust that, it's like, oh, okay, I can, let me build it this way because this feels more aligned. This excites me more. This is like, this is what I want to do. So, yeah. Oh, one second. It, I love that quote. So if prayer is you talking to God, then intuition is God talking to you. That's what you said, right? I yeah. love that. Yeah. So. My next question would be like, how do you then think that meditating and journaling helps with business? Hmm. And I guess it has to do with that then. It's it's that, yeah. It's like, in order to hear that voice, we all have like distractions and distortions. So addiction, I struggled with addiction for lots of years. You know, I struggled with distraction still with the phone and stuff. And it's like, so clearing out the distractions and distortions first and then and then getting your body into a state where you can like receive insights that are you're like that didn't come from me like some of the things i'm like what like that's way too 
I don't know where that came from, but that's a great idea. <laughs> and then, yeah, and then it's like life kind of becomes this fun game where you're like, all right, what's the next download? Oh, okay. That sounds interesting. Yeah, so that's kind of how I do it. <laughs> I get exactly what you're saying because I meditate and I've been journaling quite a bit myself. And when you say downloads, I completely understand what you mean. Yeah. Like, but for people who are listening in right now and it seems very abstract to them, could you explain how that works and like a, how do you use this in like a practical way? Like how do you use those tools to like yeah. solve a problem, I guess? Yeah. So, I mean, that's where the journaling comes in a lot because it's, it's like, let's say I have a problem. Let's take out a piece of paper and be like, what are all the, what are all the elements of the problem? And, and you just, you're like, oh, okay. Do the, da, 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 da. Actually, let me tell you a story because this is, this is like perfect. Like this is relevant. And by the way, like as for, for people listening, it's like, as you do this, the more you do it, and then you have an experience of it, the belief that this happens like solidifies and then, and then it happens faster and faster and faster. Um, so back a while ago, I was like in that time where I was like on the brink of bankruptcy for like years, just like, Oh, I don't know. Um, uh, I basically was down to my last hundred bucks. Okay. And this is, yeah, maybe 15 years ago now. So I'm down to my last hundred bucks and I'm, I'm like, fuck this. Like, I'm just, I'm done. Like, just fuck it. <laughs> and, um, and so I, uh, pull out my journal and I'm writing at the desk and I just write out like every, Pr problem like everything that's there i was like i just lost a client i have no money i have a hundred bucks like i've got this bill coming up da 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 I, I don't know how to do it i feel like whatever just download uh and then closed the book went to bed and i woke up in the morning and then i had this practice of like a daily gratitude so i would go to the journal and then next page i'm like I'm grateful for nah, my breath. I'm great. Like try to find some of the, and, and I start writing. Right. And all of a sudden it was just like ideas start popping. And I was like, Oh, interesting. Interesting. Okay. And I just start like letting my hand go. And all of a sudden it's like, choo, 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 choo. I know the person I had to talk to. I know the way I had to pitch it. I know like what I had to do. And so I'm like, take immediate action the guy like randomly, it was like a friend of a friend. I'm like, I don't know why that guy popped into my head. I'm going to give him a call. Turns out he's in Vancouver, which was like not too far from me. Uh, I'm like, I got an idea. Do you want to hear it? He's like, I can meet you uh, tomorrow uh, at this restaurant. It's like, great. So I take my last hundred bucks. I like, I get a bus. I have to get, go on a bus, a ferry, um, take a sky train and go meet this guy for a drink at this like, fancy hotel restaurant and he buys a drink and I, all i did was i just asked him about himself and i was like he's very wealthy very successful and he said he was in town buying an apartment and then i was like oh cool and he's like i later found out like no a whole apartment building and i was like oh shit okay <laughs> um and i spent the whole time just asking him about like how do you think, like, how do you get to a spot where you're buying apartment buildings? Like what? And he just shared and taught me. And then he's like, what did you want? At, at the end of the conversation, he's like, what did you want again? I was like, I, I have a property. I have a project. I'm like trying to figure it out. I put it on one piece of paper. I'm like, this is what it is. Basically I'm looking for 25 grand. Uh, and that was on like a Thursday and on Monday, 25 grand in the bank account. And I'm like, what the fuck? That's weird. And, and so it's like, I don't know. I don't know how that works or like, but then I had like this belief that it was like, okay, like there's something to like, just listen to the, like quiet the mind, connect in, get the download, take inspired action. And doors open. We did the same thing with the school games. As soon as Hormozzi said school games is on, it was like, do we want to play? Yeah, we want to play. Okay, how are we going to win? Okay, here's how we're going to win. Like literally just, okay, jotted it out, strategized it. I already knew we were going to win. Yeah. <laughs> this is so sick as well 
because most people never do this. Like we're so distracted, right? Mm. We're so up and about, and we always think that we can only find the answers out there. Totally. Yes. Where we normally just find the best answers if we do exactly what you just described. Totally. It's insane. It's yeah. really cool. <laughs> yeah, and it takes. It's like, you know, it's interesting because when you're younger, you don't know or you don't trust yourself as much. You need mentors to like to show you and to learn from and to teach. But then there comes a point where you trust yourself and you're like, you know, best for you and only you will know like what the right move is. You can get feedback and insights from other people and mastermind incredible value there. And actually maybe just one other point on that. Why? Like I love the community idea is because, and you would notice this. I mean, you have a great community, but it's like, and school, uh, like Sam is brilliant at this uh, and Hormozy because it's like they're not generating the ideas, right? The community is generating what features come out next and what, you know, what, what the f- platform is becoming. You and I are out there running ads to school, <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> like uh, they're brilliant at it. And it's because they've like, they've locked into, in the book, Think and Grow Rich, they talk about, it's like the infinite mind or like the infinite intelligence. And it's like when two or more people come together in a spirit of harmony, you access a third mind. And it's like, boom, you're getting downloads that would never have happened individually. So the mastermind has its role, but then it's like trusting. Yeah, trusting. During the periods of my life when I've had like the best, like changes in my life in my business that had the biggest results was yeah. when I was doing this like every night yeah. talking with myself noting down going to bed waking up continuing the journal <laughs> totally. but I'm a human being right so like I as everybody else so I kind of fall off that from some time to time like this is a reminder for me right now to just get back to it like nice. what's your kind of advice to people to kind of make this a routine like and yeah. like how do you like incorporate it and do you recommend that you do it all the time or do you do it like yeah. once in a while or yeah, I guess the first thing is like, uh, be easy on yourself because it's like, because there's like, there's seasons, right? Uh, I don't, the like routines and habits are good to like establish a habit. But then if you don't ever change that habit, like ha- you stay stuck in the particular spot that you're in. And then if you're a growing human, like, you, you kind of like, they serve you for a period of time. Um, so that's kind of like the first thing. But then in terms of like how to, uh, this is where I feel like having a relationship with a higher power is the ultimate cheat code. Um, I, I call it like God mode because it's like, it's like a like a best friend, like somebody that you just kind of go chat with and like an invitation to connect in with like the bigger universe or like and then you get these um like we do retreats um uh surrounding yourself with amazing people who like remind like just like you're like, oh, this is a reminder for me. I'm like, yeah, I have like a community of great men in my life. I have um, you know, my business partner. Uh so there's people who remind me of that all the time. I think that's really key. Um, Yeah. And then ultimately it's like, I think being curious, like adopting like a curious frame is also part of it because there's a million different ways to do it. You know, I've studied um, Christianity, the Bhagavad Gita, uh, you know, uh, A Course in Miracles, which is like my main text now, Tao. uh, And, there's many different roads. There's many different ways. And so if you're like curious, then you're like, Oh, what's that about? Like how maybe that will work. Maybe one time I'm meditating, maybe I'm doing yoga, maybe I'm doing some other thing. There's lots of ways to get the download infinite ways. Um, again, so then it's like, if you did nothing else, but listen to the quiet whisper of your heart that like led you to more excitement, I think. And like, 
and you could quiet and like, what do I, what inspires me? What do I feel like excited to do next? If you did nothing else other than that, I think you'd be on a good path. A thousand percent agrees. And I can already like hear some people listening to this, that it sounds so abstract. It sounds so weird. Like it sounds like spiritual kind of, you know, totally. but it's, this is where you get the unique ideas from. It's from yourself. And you can only get that when you quiet your mind. Because most people want to go through a course and copy what other people do. And with this, you actually invent. And you get the ideas from you don't know where. Because yep. it's sometimes it's like, this is not my idea. Yeah. I got it like from somewhere. Yeah. Like in the infinite mind or, right? Well, I, and um, I, I feel like because there's, there's like a synthesis. Like, like for example, you know, I... Uh, uh, just today, right? I'm we're building out like a new course in our school community, and I'm I, you know I'm building it out, and but then I like go into your community because I'm like, oh yeah, how does Max do this, right? And then I like look at your um, in your free community, and I'm like, oh yeah, okay, like have like a point of reference, but then it's like oh, okay, and then I go about building my thing like the way, but I'm but I'm still looking and I'm still like getting data points in, and I think that. Uh, like and uh, Kirby, right? Like he has his community, like the synthesizers, right? And I just, I really like, I resonate with that because it's like, I think that's what we're doing. But if you're, but if you don't connect into your own source, mostly you're just copying, you know, mm -hmm. but then it's like the synthesis happens in the, in the like, okay, cool, cool, cool. Like pulling from a couple ideas. And then you're like, what's my uniqueness here? Okay, great. Yeah, and yeah, so that's kind of how I think about it. Because doing this practice of meditation and journaling is like arguably the highest leveraged thing that you can do in your business. Like doing that for in total an hour per day, it's most likely going to get you way further than not doing it at all and trying to just work, work, work. Like totally. Right? Well, think about yeah. it, think about it this way. This is this is there's um there's different unlocks at, at different stages that you're in, right? So, uh, so understanding like where you're at, but like sometimes you just got to hustle. Like, you know, I have, a, I have seasons of life where I'm not meditating, I'm not doing anything, but I'm like whoosh, laser focus. I'm like, I just got to do this thing, right? I get up in the morning and I'm like, fuck meditation. I'm just going to like, I'm going into work. That's a season, right? And you're like, okay, cool. Uh, nothing wrong with that, right? Uh, and then the, um, but it, but like a big unlock in our business. So initially you're kind of optimizing for money, right? Cause you're like, I got to make money, right? So let's make some money. But then you start to like, at least for me, my values started to shift where time was more important than money. So then I start optimizing for time which changes the business model, right? But that actually unlocked way more money. So then I was like, oh, okay, amazing. <laughs> and But then you're like, what happens if I optimize for energy? Because energy is actually like, like a higher frequency and something that's more, how can you spend, how do you have more quality time? You do it with more quality energy, right? So if you're showing up from an energetic frequency of like love, acceptance, abundance, the way you spend your time will be infinitely greater than if you're showing up in fear, greed, or that, the, who cares about your time? So then, so now the next unlock for us has been, oh, okay, well, what if we optimize for energy? What if we optimize, you know, our day and like, what are we doing in the mornings and the afternoon based on like my energy vibe? And, and then how do I, increase the energy, which is simple things like drink water, go work out, you know, read inspiring things, hang out with amazing people. And then it, so, but there's like a cascading effect, right? And if you, for a lot of entrepreneurs, I mean, this was my journey. It's like, we're not paying attention to time. We're not paying attention to energy. We're just paying attention to the money. Gotta make the money, gotta make the money. And it's like, the money comes <laughs> way faster, way easier when your time and your energy are optimized for. I love this. Like during one of my think tank sessions, when I started to plan my community and I was very, I had that season of like doing like the meditation and the, the journaling and the talking out loud and the thinking before going to bed. Yep. I had like this one download that 
it's basically what you're saying right now that it just came out of nowhere and just understood that energy is the currency of the spiritual realm. Yes. Like the more energy I have, the more stuff I can create. Totally. And I can create the more energy I have, I can create it in my mind. And yep. then that becomes kind of, yeah. hundred percent sick. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Um, how do you think like, because a term that a lot of people know and recognize is like manifestation and like a law of attraction. Like, how do you think that all of this kind of plays into that? Do you know a guy named Bob Proctor? You ever yes. heard of him? Okay. So I worked with him for three years, like in early days. We've and lost him now, right? He's, yeah, yeah. he passed away yeah. a couple of years ago. I worked in his company for three years, like selling his programs, got to mastermind with him regularly. And he's like, he's the, he's an abundance wizard. Like he is, I would say one of the like OG law of attraction guys. And a lot of people get it wrong because there's an integration that's often missing. So like I've never been more broke in my life than when I was studying the secret and law of attraction, just trying to manifest my dreams over here. Uh, come on. I, and um, <laughs> like, here's a good example. So I was working with him. And one of the very first exercises in his program was to take out a card and write, write your goal. And so I remember mine, it was like, I'm so happy and grateful. Also a tied to an emotion, happy and grateful. So I'm so happy and grateful now that I earn $10,000 a month in increasing quantities from multiple streams of income. And that was like, I'm going to put, put that in my pocket. Um, but six months into his mastermind program, I'm all angry. I'm like, oh, this shit doesn't work. Like I'm more broke than ever. I'm, I've just paid 15 grand for a bunch of hoo-hoo. Um, and I like get on a call with him and, and like in the mastermind and he's like, all right, well, let me ask you, are you carrying your goal card? And I was like, I was like, I've done all the work. I'm doing all the work that is like, no, no. But are you carrying the goal card like on your, on yourself? And I was like, no. Uh, no. And then he's like, so how do you expect this program to work when you didn't even do the very first thing that I asked you to do inside of this program? And it was like, carry the card. And I was like, okay. So I carry, so then I wrote it out and I start carrying it. But then what happens is like, then he's like, make your plan, execute on the plan. And even though I was doing the things like, whatever, it wasn't happening. And then it was like, you have to take the action. You have to do the action. You have to, you can't just think about it. So that was a way of anchoring the thought. And then I would walk around all the time, like carrying this little thing. I'm so broke. I can't even afford cheese on my macaroni. I'm like, I'm so happy and grateful now that I'm $10,000 a month. And, uh, and then um, in the next five months, I put on a workshop. Uh, we got, it was in person. We got 88 people to that event and I sold my first coaching program for 400 bucks and we had 40 people sign up and I had, and I made $16,000 in one night. Um, and that fundamentally changed the way that I thought about money forever because it was like, what <laughs> you can Huh. That that was like not even a thought to me that that was possible. Um, and so most people who are doing law of attraction, woo woo stuff is like they're way too over in the, if there's a spectrum, if you think of it as a spectrum, there's like the material world, um, the capitalist world, the monetary world, the tangible world. And then there's the esoteric, etheric, spiritual world. I believe like a lot of our work is integrating both of these, um, integrating these parts of ourselves. Uh, there's like the law of polarity is another law, but it's like, if you can integrate and understand both of those worlds, you become a powerful force and you can, you can create, it's like, take the ethereal, bring it through. You have to take the action. Like the story before it was like, I got the download action. You have to take the action. So, that's the thing that I see missing a lot with, um, yeah, people who are like doing the manifestation stuff. It's like, 
nothing happens without action. And there's also like, uh, I mean, one other thought around that is you have to get busy doing the things that you can do and then be unattached or like detached from like the how your job is to figure out like what it is you want and then take the actions that you can see for you to do. But then unattached from the outcome in the school games, I did a post that said, I surrender. And it was right before we hit a huge jump, like in our, in our um, run. And I was like, I surrender because I had taken all the actions that I could take and the emails were built, the campaigns were built. And it's like, I surrender. Uh, and we were like in 15th or something. And then all of a sudden it was like, and the, there's no way that I could have planned for all of the people who came into our community at that point. Um, there's something else happening, right? Like, and, and if you're holding on to it has to happen this way, you miss out on like the universe helping you. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's a giant paradox. It's really, it's, it's really, uh, an interesting, life, you know, this thing that we're doing. Uh, but I find it fascinating of just playing in these two realms and creating and being a creator, communing with our creator, getting to jam with fun people like you. And yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's just fun. <laughs> because that would be my next question. If you think that there's something else like behind the scenes that is kind of happening, like you get the download, you get the intuition, you act on that intuition and like if you think that there's something else going on and yeah. if so have you found an answer to what that is yeah it's faith it's faith that's what faith is because you have like there's this and it's the gap that every entrepreneur when you're starting you're like i have a, an idea i'm going to start my business right and then there's this gap of the unknown that that requires faith that you can't see the whole, you can't see how it's going to unfold. There's no way, you know, two years ago, you could see where you are now. School wasn't even a thing, probably, right? Like, and so, but you were taking action. You're like moving towards the thing that excites you. You're like getting the downloads. And there's the, the gap of the unknown, which is the invitation for us to like, that's what there is to play in. And it's way easier to do that when you have a belief in a, in a benevolent God who is like here to support you and love you and has got your back and um, is here for your highest learning, it's way easier to be in that space. Um, and then in that way, it's like even, the, even when things go shitty, like going half a million dollars in debt or, you know, <laughs> like any of that, um, it's literally the gift because when I was younger, I had goals that like, I wanted to be, I just wanted to be wealthy, successful. You know, I, that was what I wanted. And I feel like God was like, Oh, that's what you want. All right. Well, you most certainly do not have the character that can attain that. You most certainly do not have the beliefs of somebody who can attain that. You most certainly do not have the skills of somebody who can attain that. Here you go. Here's 15 years of hardship to develop you, to grind you down, to help you become the person that is capable of holding that kind of wealth and abundance. And in that way, it's like, oh, thank you for the hardest times of my life. I appreciate that. You ha That helped me become who I am, what I'm capable of. Yeah. I don't know if that answered the question, but <laughs> no, that's perfect, and that takes like, you segues to my next question just perfectly because my next like a note down, like one of the first thing you said that you you want to understand you're interested in understanding the self. So, do you believe that you can like build a character that helps you achieve your goals faster, or like like hundred yeah. percent? And yeah. if so, and if so, how do you do that? Yeah, this is where it gets really kind of fun. Also, I'll, I'll like tie this into marketing, like how we've been like doing our marketing. Um, because so you exist on three planes at the same time, always, right? You have a physical body, 
you have the intellect, and then you have the spiritual or emotional. Um, so there's the spiritual self, there's the intellectual self, and then there's like the physical self. Um, three different selves all existing at the same time. So already you're like, okay, um, I can, I can see that. And then, uh, you have, everybody has an inner image of themselves, right? Uh, psycho cybernetics, great book around that. And it's like, we have this inner image, um, And then the inner image exists in the subconscious mind. And if you don't program this yourself, then it's whatever your parents gave you, society's given you, like your friends have given you, your social circles, and you're like, this is who I am. And then for a lot of people, it's like they don't realize they can just change that. It's just a construct in the mind of like, this is who I am. You're like, well... You can become something else if you choose, like if you wanted. And so uh, so part of it is like most of the success that anybody achieves is always going to be in alignment with the inner image that they hold of themselves, right? So somebody who – that's why like welfare recipients – are typically like ninth and 10th generation welfare recipients. Like my parents, my grandfather's parents, parents are what, because it's like, that's the conditioning and vice versa, like very wealthy people, they can lose everything and then build it back up. And it's because they have an image of themselves of somebody who can do that. So that's the work of like building the image Uh, And initially you do that through conscious design of like, who do I want to be? Who do I want to be? And this is where it's really interesting because you can bring this into your marketing. So if you know that what people actually want, like a lot of marketing, they talk about what are the fears and frustrations and then what's your goals and desires, right? And then we have a program that helps you go from that to this. But if you actually understand that people all what what people are actually buying is a future version of themselves then you can speak to the market your marketing can actually hit at a deeper level you can speak to the identity you can speak to the values you can speak to and that's like community is so interesting right new earth health coaches new earth is a reference to Eckhart Tolle his book a new earth so our clients are typically a little bit more spiritually aware they've probably read that book The title of that book is Awakening to Your Life's Purpose, like the subtitle. And um, and then health coaches. But then it's like, we can speak to the pains, but also there's a certain kind of person that we want to call in, like the psychographic of that person. And I've just found that to be a big unlock in attracting like amazing clients, not just clients who want like fix my problem, but like clients that I love working with that I'm like, this is, and they stick around forever because you're like, it's tribe, it's community. It's like like-mindedness. Um, so how do you do it? It's like consciously choosing or seeing like who, who, what's my goal. And then it's like, who do I need to become in order to achieve that goal? And then creating that manifesto. Like I have it written down. It's like, You know, Dan's featured on Forbes. Dan's awesome. Dan's, you know, kind, generous, a freaking genius. Um, And then it's like through spaced repetition, planting that thing into the subconscious, like programming, just like you would, if you don't do it consciously, then whatever you're scrolling on is that's programming, but you can just consciously do that and you choose what goes in there. And then and then you start to implant it. You take actions. It solidifies. Uh, like if you take in an action in alignment with that image of yourself, it then solidifies. I am this kind of person. I am this kind of person. I am. And then you are over time. This how I do it. There might be other ways, but like that's every, every maybe like three to six months. I redo that process and I have a, it, it's what we teach in our self-leadership modules. It's like, who do you need to be become? And then how do you ri- wire your subconscious mind to support you in that? And that's why I think like a lot of people, you must know this, but it's like 
you can have the best systems and strategies in, in the world and you can give them to two people and one person just crushes with it. And the other person just, it doesn't work. And they are like, Oh, your program doesn't work or whatever. And it's like, what's the difference? It's the, it's the operating system that like their operating system. Um, and so knowing that it's like, we've taken that on in our coaching programs to like help people with that piece, because if we can get that piece working, any strat like all the strategies work, you know? <laughs> um, yeah. hundred percent agree. And like the book that did that for me, because I didn't learn it from somebody was like the classic one thinking or rich, like, you know, write down your desire and you mentioned Bob Proctor as well. Yep. I know that he, he was a huge fan of that book as well. Do you think that is a good book for people to like start with or like, is there any other type of like practical, like thing they can do or read? You mentioned like a book by, by Maxwell Maltz as well, but yeah. that might be a little bit not as practical. Yeah. It's more so good to know. Yeah. I mean, think and grow rich is foundational. That's like what I love about that book too, is you can reread that book and it's like, cause it was written in the 1930s. So it's like, it's a, it was a different time back then too, but What's cool about that book is it's like the secret of this book is mentioned no fewer than a thousand times, but it's never directly named in the book. It's always in the space. Like it's, it's never directly named. So it, it hints to and alludes to, and I think when Napoleon Hill wrote that, it's like, he's speaking to the infinite intelligence. Like he mentions infinite intelligence, but it's like, the secret of this book is never directly named because you can't really put words on it. You, you, if you're, there's a magic, there's a, um, and I know that that sounds woo woo, but, but think and grow rich would be a foundational text because it applies like practical things. But more importantly than that, is it like it shapes, um, it's just like a foundation for how to think about creating wealth. And creating abundance. Yeah. So Think and Grow Rich would give you some of that like framework for, for doing this kind of work. Yeah. Would you say that then like the practice of like writing down your desire and like sticking to that practice, like doing something practical, that kind of kickstarts this thing that we don't really know how it works in a way? Yeah. Yeah. Well, even just getting clear on like most people don't set goals, even just that, like, and, and certainly not. Like in our community, we're like, we're kind of done with the 10K months. It's like 50K months is the new, is the standard around here. We're not, we're not doing like 10K months is the new poor. <laughs> Things are expensive. I don't know about like in Sweden, but in Canada, it's crazy. And a lot of people don't even, it's like the 10K a month thing has been a goal since I was in high school, which is like 20 years ago. And it was like, oh yeah, I got to get a six figure job. I'm like, meanwhile, everything has exponentially gotten more expensive, but everybody's still, th that's the, like this baseline got to get to 10 K a month. I'm like, why, why is that the goal? And it's because like people haven't actually thought about what do I actually need? What do I actually want? Yeah. So just that one action, writing on a little piece of paper, carrying it around with you every day will get into your thinking and it will disrupt the normal pattern of like, because we all just like live in these loops. We, we think about the same thing for 95% of our days. We do the same thing for 95% of our days. And if you can insert like new thought, new goal, you can break free of like whatever your conditioning is. Yeah. So to like summarize it then, like if you could break it down to like three things that like nobody, like somebody's listening to this and this is super interesting. Like, Everything you've mentioned, like what are like the top three things that I should like implement and like start doing? First thing is like cut out all distractions and distortions. So anything like there are things that people know are like low level energy, addiction, things that are like intuitively on some level, you're like, this is out of integrity for me. Anything like that. Um, first start there. Uh, what, and here's a practical list. Uh, 
the integrity list. If you just wrote, got a piece of paper and you wrote out everywhere in your life and go back as far as possible, everywhere in your life where you have said something and you didn't do it or you, um, or anywhere in your life where you feel a lack of power, like you feel insecure about or like un uneasy about, and you just wrote a giant list and you went about making all of those things right. Like I had to go and have conversations with ex-girlfriends that I lied to about why, that, why I broke up with them. I was like, that wasn't honest, actually. Nervous. I didn't really want to. You don't have to do that either. But it was just like I got honest with myself. And then I restored my integrity. And then my word starts to have a lot more power because I honor what I say I'm going to do and I have honor in my word. If you don't have honor in your word and you're setting goals, doesn't mean anything, doesn't matter because there's no honor in the word, in the goal setting. So that's the first thing is like anywhere that you feel like a lack of integrity, um, write it out in a list, put a date on it and say, I'm going to pay my taxes by this date. I'm going to pay that parking bill by this date. I'm going to whatever. That'd be number one. And every one of those that you do, you get power. And then that's actually the power that attracts all of the other things. So that'd be number one. Number two would be like, give yourself an hour and dream and then 10 X, whatever, whatever that is. Just like think bigger. Um, I think a lot, yeah, just like Grant Cardone, Grant Cardone, it 10 X you're thinking, take a goal. I want to make 10 K stretch it hundred K. Um, if that feels aligned for you as well. So it's like tune in, like don't just 10 X, maybe it's a six X, but like get just honest with what you want. Um, get clear on that and write it out on a little card and carry it with you or a vision board or something that you see regularly. And then number three would be join Max Premium and uh, learn from one of the best on how to build an online business. Uh, but actually just like make a plan. And like, if you don't know what the plan is, like learn from the mentors. Um, and then directly after that, it's just like execute. So to summarize all that, it's like, get right with yourself, restore your integrity, get clear on your vision, and then like map your plan and then take inspired, frequent action. And, and if you can do all of that with the frame that the point of all of that is to become the 10.0 version of yourself. Like that's the actual goal. It's not about the money. It's not about the business, but it's about you becoming that version of yourself and know that you'll be tested with the challenges. You'll be tested with the success. Uh, you'll be tested to gauge if you are on track of becoming that person, then that's the infinite game. And you're like, cool. Who am I becoming? Let, like, let's go. What's the next level? Who's next version of Max? Who's next version of Dan? Um, yeah, would be my thoughts on that. I love it. I love it. And so as a final question, then, like, where can people find out more about you and what you do? Like, what do you search? Where do people find more about you? Good question. I had this, just this image. I'm like, I'm like a wizard in a back corner alley. Like I'm not, I don't have a big YouTube channel. I don't know. Uh, but the Dan Harrison on Instagram um, and uh, like in school, I'm, I'm, I'm around uh, school games. I'm in there. Um, if you're a health coach, uh, we only let health coaches into our free community, but it's a um, health coach community. And uh yeah, that's kind of that's where I hang out. School and Instagram. I would love to uh, like listen to your content more about this stuff. I don't know if that's something you want to do, though, but that would be sick. 
Dude, thank you for that reflection because um, here's, I, I wrote a post about this. I haven't published it yet, but it, it's like, uh, it's to our community. And the title of the post is y'all are in trouble now. And it's uh, it, because for the last seven years, I basically have been head down learning online marketing, how to build the funnels, how to do the things, how to, but I'm just, a, I'm a coach who's studied with Bob Proctor, who's done A Course in Miracles, introduction leader with Landmark, like, you know, married with a young in depth psychologist. And then it's like, now that I've figured out the online marketing stuff and we have like a business that has monthly recurring revenue and is like, oh, this is chill. Okay, we can scale this thing. This, this, this part of Dan is coming, is coming. I uh, got so excited. I unplugged myself. So um, thank you for that reflection. I'm going to start sharing more of this content uh, online. Yeah. Like, yeah. As you said, like Bob Proctor and everything, like all of the experience that you have and the knowledge that you have, I would 100% love to watch. <laughs> like I'm seeking for that type of content. I would love to listen uh, to what you have to say on that. So you should 100% do that. Thank and you, Let bro. me know whenever you launch it. <laughs> I appreciate yourself. that. Well, yeah. I, I'll, I'll I'll start sharing that and then learn from you on how to share it. <laughs> and it's also a huge desire in the marketplace. A lot of people want to know about this stuff, like a uh, lot of people. So massive potential there as well. Interesting. Nice. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time, Dan. It was a super interesting chat. So yeah, I appreciate you jumping on. Thank you very much, Max. Yeah, appreciate the chat too.